mind viruses and the shocking cures. Mike Robertson and his wife, Karen, are the lead pastors of V1 Church in Visalia, California. Stirred by a passion to grow the local church, Mike is known for writing and speaking with humor and wit as he explores serious questions about faith, life, and the Christian walk. Under the Robertson's leadership, V1 Church has grown to nearly 5,000 in weekly attendance and a listening audience of over 7,000, speaking all over the world and having penned multiple best-selling books, you'll love Mike's personal stories and down-to-earth teaching. Please help me welcome Pastor Mike Robertson. Hey, Mike, welcome. It's so good to have you here. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for having me here. This book, The Mind Viruses, I love that title because it, 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 certain thoughts get in your head and it's like they're camped out there. And they stay there and they're hard to get rid of, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, you know, even in the real world, if you've got a cold or a flu, it's a virus, they can't give you any meds for it. No. They just tell you, go home because there's nothing that works on it other than just getting your immune system there's up. nothing that works on it. And, uh, you know, I, I think a virus is um, one of the hardest things to get rid of. Yeah. And a mind virus is a lot of times is uh, thinking that you borrowed from somebody over the years. Maybe your relatives gave you a mind virus and you just think that away because you think that away. And it's a tragedy that a lot of people never get rid of their mind viruses. That's a great thought that you didn't get that by yourself. It was transmitted yes. from everybody you grew up with. Yes, yes. And not only that, you got a devil out there helping you with a few thoughts himself. The Bible says he throws fiery darts at you. And I think it's, it happens a lot of times to a lot of people. You, you ever get a thought that is, is not yours? You yeah. think, where in the world did that thought come from? And a lot of times it's just the enemy throwing fiery darts and making you think ugly thoughts. You ever had a thought of suicide? You're driving down the road. I wonder what it would be like to drive my vehicle into that embankment over there. And how many of you know that, you know that the Lord didn't give you that thought. It's true. Uh, you didn't give yourself that thought. So there's an enemy also trying to get you to buy a thought. So therefore he can build a stronghold out of that thought. And one day you wake up and that's just the way you think. You got a big old stronghold, a household of thoughts that were just a combination of over time, you got a mind virus. You know, the Word of God is probably the only thing that's going to take somebody who's been, if you've been raised in a really defeated religion, denomination, yes. then really defeated mom and dad, and a really defeated uncle and aunt, grandpas and grandmas, and a really defeated small thinking town or neighborhood, you are just <laughs> almost finished if you don't deal with the mind virus. <laughs> if you don't. You know, Proverbs 23, 7, we all know the verse, as you think, so shall you be. As you think, so shall you be. You know, you can wake up in the morning and uh, you ever had one of those days when you go look in the mirror and you're, you don't know what you're looking at, you know, you're just looking at you. And, and then you can start your day off just badly by looking in the mirror and you get these thoughts, well, I'm so ugly, I'm depressed, I'm discouraged. And I say, no, 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 no. What happened to this is the day that the Lord has made? <laughs> yeah. So every time I get a mind virus thought, an evil thought, I counteract it with something from the Word of God. Yeah. And you have to do that with a lot of your relative thinking. I mean, <laughs> go to the family reunion, buddy, you got, a, you got mind viruses the last three or four years if you don't use the Word of God against it. So That's so true. The Word of God is our best antidote. Uh, you know, I wake up and I, 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 I look at it like this. I'm driving down the freeway every day. And... <clears throat> My first thought uh, as I'm driving down the road is a negative thought. You, you get those negative thoughts? <laughs> yeah. And you just, where did that come from? You're driving down the road, so you have an opportunity to take the exit ramp, negative town. Once you take that exit ramp and you go down into negative town, there's a lot of negative people living down in negative town. And some of them have been there for a long time and they really know how to think negatively. Yeah. If you'll just hold on, the next exit says Happy Town or Happyville. <laughs> just hold on and just wait on the Word of God. Let the Word of God get rid of those negative thoughts. You go to Happy Town, you hang out with some good people, and I, that's the key. It's, it it all matters who you hang out with as well. You know, I was reading that verse in Hebrews 11, 1, where it says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And you know what I found? Like, 
do you find the same? I find where if I begin to believe something, I begin to look for evidence of what I believe, yes. negative or positive. Yes. So if I was to get a thought hit me right now, uh, you know, people here don't like me. So I begin to sift through the faces. That one's got his arms crossed. That one's yeah. not smiling. Yeah. That one, you know, is, I'm going, I've got evidence. There look at those go. faces. It's amazing how whatever you believe, you find evidence for. Yes. And so I'd rather do what you said, take the exit to the promises of God and, yes. happy, and look for his evidence in the word. Yes, that is so good. Yeah. I heard a famous guy one time uh, preach a sermon on BS, belief systems. <laughs> uh, that's become a bit of an infamous <laughs> message out there. <laughs> but it's so true. It's your belief it system. And uh, uh, we, we Christians, we try to do the best to live for God. But then we pack, we pick up religious thinking, and uh, we become good Pharisees. You know, the Pharisees had 618 laws before you got to the Ten Commandments. They called them the fence laws, because if the Ten Commandments says uh, don't break the Sabbath, they would uh, step back and build about three or four fences before that would don't even uh, drag your furniture across the floor on the Sabbath. That's work. And don't uh, carry your load this far. I mean, they're really, really good in being religious. And then we make a mistake. We make people religious rather than making them uh, have That's the right true. belief system. Yeah. You were talking about the fiery darts. And, you know, it says the fiery darts. And it, we're supposed to stop it with a shield of fire. Faith. Yes. So what, would, what do you do? Because I think people need to know that you've been a pastor a long time. You yes. oversight pastors. I mean, you've been in the ministry a while. You know the word. Yes. You've got this. You're on seventh book or seven books yes. or something like that. But yes. yet you still have to be so aware because a thought will start coming. And Satan, although the guy's got no power, he's crazy. Yes. He's kind of smart at studying someone yes. and then whew, bringing yes. a thought that can stop you from achieving what God's called you to do. Yes. I don't think the devil can read your mind. No. I believe he can read your face. Yes. And you're feeling gloomy, you're feeling down, and you're feeling like a basset hound. He'll throw <laughs> one more dart at you. I got him now. I got her yeah. now. And you just, but faith <clears throat> is the only thing that can pull us out of that. Without faith, it is what? Impossible, Impossible. to please God. But it, it, it matters what I speak it matters that I speak out in faith because sometimes the enemy or the attack gets so big, uh, I just have to let everybody know I am a believer and I believe in the Word of God. I'm letting all those enemies that are working against me right now know that I believe in the Word of God. You know, uh, Isaiah said, God said, your thoughts are not my thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. And he says, my word in Isaiah 55, he says, my word that I speak out of my mouth will not return to me void. And I got a hold of that one day and I thought, Lord, I know your word is so powerful. You said it will not return void. But sometimes your word returns to me void. And I learned something. He said to me, he says, that's because you don't believe my word like I believe my word. Mm. I said, wow. You know, you tell your children to go upstairs and go to bed. And uh, they'll say, yes, mama, yeah, daddy. And about 15 minutes later, you hear like it's a war up there. <laughs> and they're beating the wall. I told you kids to go to bed. And they're still 15 minutes later. So here you go up the stairs and you, you know, you walk a little harder to make sure they hear you coming. And as soon as you open that door, they look like they're just as snug as a bug in a rug. <laughs> uh, but what happened? What happened? They didn't believe your word like you believed your word until a little pressure got applied to the situation. Sometimes I think because we don't believe the Word of God, and the Word of God can answer all things, I believe, I think we have some pressure situations come along sometime just to remind us that we are Word people. We are people of faith. We need wow. to walk by faith. We need to talk by faith. That is so good. Let's take a break right here, and then when we come back, let's unpack some of the book. Because right. you, we're not going to be able to get through the whole thing, but I think we can share enough to show people that it's not the devil that is so powerful that he is stopping your life, messing up your life. It's mind viruses. It 
It is. Let's just take a break right here. When we come back, let's unpack some more of this book. My guest today is Mike Robertson with this book, Mind Viruses. And the subheading is Diagnosing What's Defeating You. You don't want to miss this next session. Everybody that got you to where you are today are not the people that can get you to where you're going. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. of technology, it is now easier than ever to connect with friends and family all over the globe. And for the first time ever, Springs Church is available to watch online. Get access to Spirit Contemporary Church every single week. You'll enjoy great music and an inspiring message from Leon Fontaine. You'll even be able to connect with people from around the world. This is my personal invitation to join me on Springs Online. Welcome back. My guest today is Mike Robertson, who wrote this book, Mind Viruses, and it's diagnosing what's defeating you. Now, the subtitle is kind of interesting because yes. for a long time, we just keep blaming the devil. We do. It's either the devil doing it to you or yes. it's God allowing it from you, yes. to you. What, what do you. So are you literally saying that everything pretty much is a mind virus? I think most things are. I think our biggest problem is ourselves. Yeah. Yes. I had a. When I was getting my first job when I was growing up was a paper route and I would throw papers and but there was this one street Mockingbird Lane and the city had not put street lights on that on that particular block and so I would I would sit there and look at that I would have to ride in the dark to go throw that paper at that one house and <laughs> fear just the fear of the dark yeah but that wasn't the devil that was me that was me. And I realized, you know, the guy who owns a paper company wants me to go put that paper on that porch. I better get over my fear and go do what I was designed to do. A lot like life. You know, we were designed to be change agents in the earth. Yeah. We need to go do something. But fear gets a hold of us. The devil didn't give you that fear. You, we, we build these things up ourselves sometimes. And where did we get that? You know, I'd have to say a lot of we got it for us from our parents. Uh, God bless them. God love them. <laughs> God love those family people at the family reunion. But yeah. uh, they, that's where we got a lot of this. And then you wake up one day and you, you just believe a, a pack of nonsense. Yeah. And it's just borrowed thinking over the years. And that's a mind virus that got a hold of you. Now, do you think that when you add religion to a belief that it just seems to make it stick powerful? Yes, yes. You know, my parents taught me when you got sick, uh, it must be the Lord that made you sick. They didn't know the Bible. Uh, so I would think sometimes when I get sick, well, God must be punishing me. Or, and then I read the Bible. And the Bible is so far from that kind of ideology. Yeah. Uh, but it, they were very religious in what they believed. Yeah. But it was off scripturally. Yeah. And if you're not going to be a script, if you're not going to be a word carrying believer, uh, you're in trouble. So true. Don't try to live this life without carrying the word in your heart, big time. You know, I grew up in a with my father, who was a pastor, in a certain denomination where it was kind of taught us that large churches are not of God. Mm. And we actually had numbers, like around 250 or so, a church should break into two parts and stay small. Is that right? And that it's more the pastor's ego, it's more, it's just not a good thing to have a large church. Now, I was young in my late teens, my early 20s, not realizing at that time that God had called me mm. 
to do some big things. And with a large church and and so I had to deal, that was a mind virus yes. for me. Yes. And uh, then I started meeting men, uh, you know, I'll never forget, you know, going to Casey Treat's church. Yes and looking at the heart of that guy and the passion for God and, you know, and then the size and what he was, and it just messed with my, <laughs> my virus, yes. my belief system. But God had to dismantle that with the word, with other people, or I never would have fulfilled yes. what he had called me to do. And I think that every person listening to us today, whether you want to fulfill a better marriage or more finances for your family and for the kingdom, that it's not the devil. He doesn't have the power to stop yes. you, but this does. Yes, yes. And we think too small. Uh, yeah. We grow up with small environment. Yeah, I grew up in a very small town. Uh, but one day I left the town and went and visited a bigger town. I came back. My town was the same, but I was different. Mm. Uh, I think sometimes we think too small. You, were, you What you were just mentioning. We have a small mentality, yeah. but now look at how you're able to touch the world. Yeah. And had you stayed with that mind virus, that big is bad, uh, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing today. Thank yeah. God that you, I'm glad you got rid of your mind virus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you did. I think it's a, a, a real good point you bring out that all of us are dealing with them. Yes. And uh, I think the enemy watches us and he sees what we're trying to do next. You know what I mean? And that's, that's when he'll shoot these stupid little thoughts in there. Yes. And we, we've got to do, how, if, you've, if you are looking at something you really want, whether it's a new you know, season with a relationship or finances that you've got to go to a whole new level, how do you just kind of break through? Is there anything that you do personally? What would be your self-disciplines in this area? Well. I get around people that are smarter than me. That's why I came to see you. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I get around people that have done great things. Yeah. Uh, if I only hang out with my, my people, uh, you know, uh, life is like getting in an elevator and you get in on level five. Every day we have to make a decision. Which friends are we going to hang out with? Are we going to hang out with the ones that are fours, threes, two, one? And there, we have some friends that are in the basement. Or do we go with those friends that are six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Every day, I want to go spend some time with one of my seven, eight, nine, ten friends, and I'm going to purposely contact that person because I know they're going to challenge me. I know they're going to make me think higher thoughts. You know, you can change your life by the, the people you listen to, the places you go, and the books you read. Totally. If you would just do those three things, get some, wow. get some better friends. You know, I, I haven't been saved all of my life. I was smoking pot one day on top of Blueberry Hill. <laughs> just after or before you were a pastor? <laughs> before I was pastor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I was smoking pot, and I was hanging out with all my buddies, and we were talking about why all the girls didn't want to date us. You know, we're a bunch of pot smokers. <laughs> and uh, um, finally, I looked at that bunch, and I realized I'm the smartest guy here. And then I realized when you're the smartest person in your circle, it's time to find some new friends. Yeah. <laughs> I decided yeah, really. that day I got to go get me some new friends. I think good, godly friends are one of the best ways to break stinking thinking off of your mind. You know, that's so good because I, I remember one time when I was, I think it was 19 or 20, and I lost my job. And uh, there was a layoff, and I was working kind of in a steel mill at the time. And, and uh, I started going for coffee with the guys who were unemployed. Oh. It felt good because oh. I had no reason to go get another job. The economy's bad, Canada, the steel industry, people taking our jobs. And the more I hung out with those guys, the, the better I felt about myself being unemployed. Yes. And I think that sometimes we hang with people because they make us feel good about ourselves where we are. What you're saying is you don't want to feel good about yourself nope. staying where you are. Yes. And when you find some new friends, it actually challenges yes. you. It might make you even feel a little bit small for a little while, but it's the best thing for you. I love that. I love that. You're confronting yourself. Yeah. You're giving yourself a confrontation. Because as long as you're hanging out with your unemployed friends, your pot smoking friends, no, they're never going to confront you no. over anything because they're just there to help pet your pain. Yeah. I don't need those kind of people. I, I need people. I need projects. I need something that confronts 
my inability that makes me get in faith. Yeah. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. If everything I'm doing right now does not require faith, I need to get a bigger project. Wow. I need to get a bigger life. Yeah. Because that means God doesn't have to help me no. live this life. I want a life that God has to show up every day or I'm in trouble. <laughs> and uh, I think that's why he shows up in your life, my life some days. And he just looks down, uh-oh, there goes Leon. You boys better help him because he's going to get himself in trouble. He's, there he goes again. <laughs> yeah. But that's faith. And that's very true. You know, so many people are attracted to somebody who's in the same place they are or the same failures. I've had people tell me sometimes, Pastor, do you know anybody I can talk to? And I'd say, well, what's about? Well, you know, I've got this problem. And is there anybody else you know that's got this problem? I'm thinking, why do you want to talk to somebody who's got the same problem you've got? Because they understand where I'm coming from. I always tell them this story. When I was a paramedic, you know, if I went to somebody with a broken leg, you know, and broken legs can be pretty bad. I mean, you're, the guy's sitting there after a motorbike accident and his leg curves off to the left. None of them ever looked at me in my uniform saying, okay, before you touch me, have you ever had a broken leg? I want to make sure that you understand how I feel. They never went there. It was, thank you, do something for the pain, fix my leg. And I think that's what you're saying too, is that in life, stop going to people that make you feel good where you are. Yes. Stop going to people that, and begin to find someone. You don't need to find someone who knows how you feel. Yes. We want to find someone with the answers to the next season. Exactly. Someone that's already been there. Yeah. So I have a friend that he buys the same car all the time. He's going to buy him a Ford Taurus every four years. And I'm sitting there thinking, <laughs> do something different with your life. Why do yep. you want to buy the same car? Yep. Why do you want to hang out with everything? Everybody that got you to where you are today are not the people that can get you to where you're going. When I came into this thing, I wanted to bring all of my friends, oh, come along with me, come along. And most of them have just fizzled out because God doesn't bring everybody along with no, you because true. you outgrew them. Yeah. There are friends for a season. Yeah. There are friends for a reason. And, but... I want some friends that are always stretching me. No, that's a powerful thought, Mike, because as I look back over my life, there's some friends that are still with me. And there's others that when they see them, they want to know why we still don't hang out. And they, but it's like they're uncomfortable in my present world. Yes. And, uh, and if I did keep hanging out, they would have given me lots of reasons to stay where I was. Yes. And there's so many people that have people around their world that just need to kind of move on a little bit. Yes. And there's some friends you need to cut them off. Because wow. they're a mind virus. They are a mind virus. They are a mind virus. And, you know, thank the Lord for our new phones that you can, you know everybody that's calling. Yeah. And there's only two buttons on that phone. There's a green one that says go, and there's a red one that says no, 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 no. And I have some guys that are still calling me. Nope, nope, nope. Why? Because I know as soon as I, they start talking, we're going to go down in the basement. And I'm not going to hang out with basement people. I'm going to hang out with balcony people. Yeah, yeah. Basement voices where they're all my life pulling me back. I'm going to find me some balcony voices that says, come on up here to the, wow. to the next level. Man, our time is up. This is so good. But I have to make this point. Every time Sally and I have embarked on doing something new, we have people that try to speak into our life being realistic, being cautious, being devil's yes. advocate. Yes. And I love this because it's basically the enemy's <clears throat> using them, trying to get a mind virus yes. to stop us yes. from moving on again and doing what God exactly. wants us. Thank you for being with me today. Oh, this has been excellent. Me. Thank you. My guest today has been Mike Robertson with the book, Mind Viruses. Stop blaming the devil, stop blaming God, and actually find out how you can do something about getting into that next season in life. We'll be right back. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this spirit contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. I really enjoyed my conversation with Mike Robertson today. You know, changing the way we think 
has such a huge impact on our influence in this world. I want to talk to you about a concept that we call spirit contemporary, because this lends itself to this message. We want to make sure that in this lifetime, on this planet, that we are in touch with God. I mean, the Bible teaches us that we should be like Jesus, who had favor with God. He listened to what God wanted him to do every step of his life. He even said, I do nothing except the Father first show me. Did you know that God wants to nudge you and show you every day how to bring blessing and miracles into people's lives, including your own? But then at the same time, we've got to fit into this world. So the Bible says that Jesus had favor with mankind. So whether you are at work, whether it is your neighbor, whether you're in another country with people who are from a different culture, God can show you and we should develop the skills as well to be totally contemporary, relevant, understanding and able to touch and reach the people that we are around. I would love to have you be a part of what God is doing here. You know, for just a, a gift of $30, you can see someone's name written in the Lamb's Book of Life in Heaven. For just a gift of $30, someone's world can be totally changed. And if you do, if you go to your phone right now and become a part of what God is doing, I want to send you a gift. And it's going to help you learn and grow in this area of being spirit contemporary. Rise up. Let God guide you, use you, and see the success that it brings into your life. Go to your phone right now, partner with us, and let's go make a change in the world and your neighborhood. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support, because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth, which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Join us again on Monday for The Leon Show. But the more that I studied Jesus and learned about him, the more that I learned that he was not like the people on the street corners. Exactly. That Jesus had very deep theological convictions and very deep expectations for how you and I should live our lives.